Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna be walking you through how to set up a stream deck to make your live streaming experience super, super easy. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So a lot of times when you're live streaming, it's a whole lot of moving parts. And I like the stream deck because maybe you have one person that really knows the intricacies of setting this whole thing up, but you don't necessarily want all the volunteers to be able to do that, or maybe you might even have some volunteers that don't want to know all that. Um, with the Stream Deck, this will allow you to make it as simple as a button press to do the whole workflow of your service or your live stream in general, because I use this for my live streams that I do here on YouTube, as well as when I run stuff at my church, we have a Stream Deck there. And it's really, really simple to get it working. Um, it works natively out of the box with OBS, with these lights <laughs> that are designed by Elgato as well too, um, as well as vMix. There are other ways and there are other programs to work with it. Um, OBS Streamlabs works with it natively, XSplit, a bunch of other programs. Now, I'll let this be known as of the recording of this, there is no way with this to work directly with like StreamYard or um, Melon or anything like that because those are programs that are actually ran on websites So this doesn't directly do it. Yeah, you could <laughs> Create something to do that, but I'm not covering that This is mainly how to get this set up in OBS and vMix And if you want to delve deeper into that you're gonna have to look through the forums and stuff like that or unfortunately probably try and figure it out yourself but we'll <laughs> talk about that later. So what do you need to do to get this set up? Well, first, I mean, you obviously need a stream deck. I have the XL right here and I'm actually using the mini for my system right here to control my lights. So you can see, turn my lights on and off right here make it real simple. But let's go ahead and just walk through what you need to get this whole thing set up. So the first thing you need to do is head over here to elgato.com and you can go over here to downloads and we're going to select your product. And honestly, it doesn't matter which stream deck you pick. The software is exactly the same. Pick your platform. I'm on windows, but this does work on the Mac as well too. You download it and then boom, there you go. And once you get the software installed, you will have a program like this. And as you can see, it is detecting my mini. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and connect the XL on this system. And as you can see, we have a new drop down and I'm going to ignore this. It's asking, do I want to copy over the settings from the mini to this one? This is like if, if you upgrade it. So I'm not going to do that. So if you happen to have multiple ones, they would be listed here. I have a keyboard just by them, by their um, parent company, Corsair, so I can program that. That's why that's listed here. But let's go here. All right, so let's minimize this because we're done with that. All right, so here is your layout here. So they give you this default welcome button that can go to a URL. We ain't using that. All right, so let's go ahead and delete that. And this is kind of my layout. I'm gonna follow with the OBS um, complete bundle that I sell on my website. This is the, like I said, the OBS complete bundle where we have our starting soon, our streaming. I'm using my webcam to simulate what we'll be having at church. Um, we have our offering and we have multiple ones that'll set up be right back to stop when people from listening to stuff and then we have our ending so we have one two three five scenes now this is very important let's while this is up you have to have obs open to set this up so let's go over here and now what we're going to do is you have multiple 
built-in controls that you have. So you have, right now I have OBS Studio, the Stream Deck itself, your system, your computer, YouTube, vMix, the controls for my lights, you have custom stuff, and you have voice mod. That's with their microphone. So we have this here. Now, with OBS Open, if we go to OBS Studio, we can now set our scenes. So we have five scenes, so we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and, you know, me, you can stretch this out to give it more spacing or whatever, whichever way you want to do it. It doesn't really matter. All right. So we're going to put these side by side. Now, let's go to our first one here. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and pick. See, it's picking up the collection, which is right there, Media Ministry. And then now it's picking up my scenes starting soon. If OBS was closed, it wouldn't be able to do this. So we're going to go through each one of these and we're going to do this and I need to get my keyboard here so I can type. We're going to do this as um, I'll call this pre live. And as you can see, it adds the names right there. You can change the images on here if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to link a place where you can actually get some images or you can just make your own. doesn't really matter. Um, I like to have it very simple for my volunteers to do. So pre-live, this is before we go live. All right, so we're gonna go to the starting soon. When we hit this one, we're gonna change this to streaming. I'm gonna say this is live. And the color changes because that shows which one is active and this scene is not active because we are on starting soon, which is pre-live. All right, let's go to our next one. I'm gonna change this to offering. And we'll just do offering. Next one, I'll be right back, be right back. And then our last one is ending, ending. All right, so now what we're gonna do, and I need to switch this so we can actually see how this is gonna work. Let's go ahead and cut over, keep this desktop up and I'm gonna switch over to my other camera, so hopefully you can, well, no, let me switch it the other way because I think it'll be easier for you to see. All right, so we have this here. So now, because the way we have this set up, what we're gonna do is we're on starting soon. If we hit live, it's gonna cut over to the live scene, which will be my webcam. Boom, there you go, hello. And then we're gonna cut over to offering. Then we also have Be Right Back. We have Ending. All right, so as you can see, we can cut in between any of our scenes very simply by just merely pressing the buttons on the Stream Deck. Makes it really simple. So if you have some other people, like for this, this is I like the, um, the OBS Complete Bundle because literally, you just work from left to right all the way through. You get, go to starting, then you're live. Then if you have offering, this just puts a graphic over top of your live video. And then you go back to live. And then if there's something, technical difficulties, or you're playing copyrighted content that you can't use, we will come over here to be right back, which will block that and play some music that's copy, um, no copyright on it. And then you go back to live, and it pretty much stays on this for the most part outside of offering unless something happens where you got to block it. And then when it's over, you just go to ending. Really, really straightforward. Now, let's cut back over to the desktop, and let's make it completely seamless so that nobody really needs to touch anything with this. So if we come back over here, we have some other controls that are built into here that make it even easier. So we can actually drag over a record button. We can also add a stream button. And there are a bunch of other things you can do. You can do compounded um, multitasking things. So you can say, oh, mute this mic, turn this one off, move to a different um, source. You can play around with that. That's not what this is for, but these commands are built in natively. So here I would say, go live. 
And remember, the dark color means it is not active. So if you click on this one, when it becomes active, I would say change this to streaming. And let's change the font the size. So that way, when you hit it, you know when somebody looks at this, oh, we're actually live. They know this. And you can do the same thing here, call this record. And then when it's actually being used, recording. Something like that. So that way, they'll know exactly when they press these buttons, you can do that. Like I said, you can change the images on this. Me personally, I like using animated ones. So like, for example, let me switch out some of these with animated ones that I have. So I have recording here. So it will actually be animated when it's actually moving. You can leave the text there if you want to. I have this other one for streaming as well too. And then there are other ones that you can do for each one. I mean, you can put um, a t um, offering plate, ending start, whatever, to make it easier for your media ministry to know that they just have to look at this and that's it. Now, vMix, the concept is kind of the same, but it works a little bit differently. So let's cut back over to our desktop and let's go ahead and make a profile for vMix. Now, I don't have vMix on this computer, but I'll hook up my other computer so you can see how this one works. All right, so let's first make a new profile. And I'm going to call this one vMix. Now, vMix is different because it actually talks directly to the Stream Deck, but the Stream Deck needs to allocate which buttons are available to vMix. And it's really simple how you do that. So let's delete this one. And we have our vMix option here. And we just have to drag this onto each box that we want to use, make available to vMix for shortcuts or any stuff like that. And of course, doing something like this, you definitely will want to change the the um, image because at this point, this could be really confusing. You could add text on it, but like I said, you can customize it any way you want to. All right, we got vMix installed. I am using the basic version, but the concept is exactly the same. All right, so we have all this set up. Now let's go ahead and add my webcam real quick. Let's make sure we mute this so we don't have a bad echo. All right, and I'm going to add um, one more thing in here. Because, again, this is the basic. You only have four options to add anything. All right. So the way we have this now is all of these buttons are available on our Stream Deck. So that's the only thing that the vMix is going to be able to see. So you're going to come over here to vMix, go to Settings. Then we're going to go to Shortcuts. And this is how you're going to make it. So now let's go ahead and add a shortcut. So if I switch over to here and see it's fine looking for a key. If I try and press any of the buttons that are not designated as shortcuts, nothing gets detected. But if I pick one of these, as you see, it now picks it up. So now this button I can use in the software. So again, that's why you need to drag the shortcut to which button you actually want to use. That's how you link these together. So what we're going to do is say this corner button now is going to be a fade. That's the function. And then I want to pick my input. So that'll be the camera. Well, no, let's say number one is going to be the intro. All right. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat for each action that we want. That's the second button. I'm going to say this is a fade into my webcam. Then number three button is going to be another fade, but this is going to bring up the Tesla charging video. And then this is one that's going to be a little bit different. 
I'm going to do this fourth button. And I want this to do an overlay number three on channel number three. Actually, no, this is the basic, so I can only use overlay number one. I want to overlay our title. All right. So now, what does all this do? So if I hit button number um, one, it brings up the the intro video that I have it done. If I switch to button number two, just so you can see, if I hit, oh, wait a minute, hold on. VMix is in the way, I mean, my camera is in the way. So now, if I hit button number two here, it brings, <laughs> it brings my main video up, all right? So button number one, and then button number two. Now button number three should play, start and play the video of the Tesla charging. All right, so as you can see, that plays. And then if I cut back to number, this one, now number four is the one I did as an overlay. Now the overlay is gonna lay that image over top of this live video like this. So that's how you can introduce comments, lower thirds or whatever that you have set up that way. And the same functions that you have in um, OBS, you can actually do the same thing. So if you want to, you can program one of the buttons to start your stream, um, stop your stream, start recording, stop audio, turn audio on. You can do whichever way you want to. So that's how you would set up your stream deck <laughs> with OBS and vMix. Please let me know in the comments, is there anything else that you want me to cover in this? I know I glossed over it really fast because once you know how to do one, it pretty much works the same and you can start doing some fancy stuff. Like I said, you can do have one button press, do multiple things. Like I have mine, turn off the background music. This is what I do for Q&A with AJ. When I hit the button, it turns the audio off, switches back to my intro, and then at the end of the intro, then it switches to my main camera. So you can do a lot of stuff with this button press. And I even have the Stream Deck set up to where at our church, they don't really press anything. The Stream Deck will show one scene when OBS is not open. It is a button on there to start OBS. Once you start OBS, the whole scene changes to nothing but controls for OBS. When OBS is closed, it goes to a different scene, which is just basic operations of the computer so really no one has to press anything except for just logging into the computer for the first time but like i said leave me a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to show you in this whole setup this is what i do here personally that's what i have set up at my church in any other churches that also ask for simplicity i always get one of these and set it up just like i just showed you so if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching folks. This is AJ and we will see you on the next video later.